This program has been developed to orient you and your team to SurSphere's microspheres and the procedures required to safely and effectively treat your patients with selective internal radiation therapy, CERT, which is also known as radioembolization. This program will review the SurSphere's microspheres product information, its mode of action, delivery system components, patient selection criteria, dosimetry calculations, dose calibration and preparation, radiology room setup, administration of SurSphere's microspheres, post-treatment imaging, other post-treatment considerations, and general radiation safety precautions. When employing a dose calibrator, the factors that may influence the calibrator's activity measurements must be kept as consistent as possible for each activity measurement to ensure that the measurement is meaningful. The factors that may contribute to inaccuracy of dose calibrator measurements include the activity measured, the volume of the source, the shape of the container holding the source, the material of the container holding the source, and the homogeneity of the suspension of the source. Therefore, the best possible calibration source for the dose calibrator is a shipping vial containing surspheres microspheres of a precisely known activity. The dose calibrator at the hospital or treatment center should be calibrated to surspheres microspheres data, which are supplied in vials of 3 gigabecquerels plus or minus 10% at the time of calibration. If requested, Surtex will supply the data in four-digit megabecquerel figures for the first three surspheres microspheres doses to facilitate this. Allowing for decay, compare the activity measurements from the dose calibrator with the activity measurements supplied by Surtex with the surspheres microspheres. Adjustments to the settings for yttrium-90 should then be made to bring the measurements made by the dose calibrator into alignment with the activity measurements supplied with the surspheres microspheres. An alternative is to apply a correction factor. These settings should then be the standard used for activity measurements of surspheres microspheres for future cases. At regular intervals, it is advisable to reconfirm that calibration remains accurate. This can be easily achieved by requesting a Surtex supplied activity measurement with a forthcoming shipment of SurSphere's microspheres. Dose preparation should be undertaken in a registered or certified nuclear medicine facility. Before preparing the dose, it is important to ensure that the facility and personnel meet any local requirements for working with radioactive treatments. Dedicated accessories for the preparation of surspheres microspheres have been designed to meet the general principles of radiation safety and to assist with the handling of the product. The patient-specific activity is drawn from the shipping vial and transferred into the V-vial which sits in its own acrylic V-vial holder. The provided syringe shield must be used to shield the syringe when preparing the dose. The V-vial holder can then be transported to the angiography suite where the patient will be treated. Before opening the dose, drape and prepare your work area behind the L-shield. You will need the following additional items on hand. A 5 milliliter syringe. A long 21 gauge lubricated needle. Two 25 gauge filtered vent needles. Waste container. Alcohol wipes. Tongs. Forceps. A permanent ink marker. 5 milliliter sterile water for injection. Bench top beta waste container and acrylic shield. Survey meter with beta probe. Unpack SurSphere's microspheres, leaving the glass shipping vial in its lead pot, and place it behind the L block on the bench top. Record the batch number and calibration date and time. Remove the V vial from its packaging. Then, completely remove the center of the aluminum seal with alcohol disinfected forceps. Mark the rim of the aluminum seal with a marker pen on two opposite locations and wipe the exposed rubber septum with an alcohol swab. Place the sterile V-vial in the dedicated acrylic V-vial holder, which is provided. 
This allows stability and shielding for the V-vial. Screw on the lid. Insert a short 25 gauge needle through the septum of the V-vial until it just pierces the septum to create a vent at one of the marked positions. It is recommended that either a purpose designed venting needle or a separate filter attached to the short 25 gauge needle is used in order to prevent fluid leakage. The V vial is now ready to receive SurSphere's microspheres. Place the V vial holder near the lead pot containing the microspheres in the shielded working area. Invert the lead pot several times before opening to resuspend the microspheres, which will have settled during shipping. Adequate resuspension can usually be achieved with thorough shaking if the lead pot is inverted and shaken for at least 30 seconds. Quickly open the pot and remove the shipping vial with tongs and determine the total activity using an appropriate ion chamber or dose calibrator. Record the activity which should be 3.0 gigabecquerel or 81 millicuries plus or minus 10% when adjusted to the date and time of calibration. Note, accurate measurement requires fully suspended microspheres, so it is important to make all measurements quickly. Return the shipping vial to the lead delivery pot, replace the lid, and determine the volume of microspheres to be withdrawn from the shipping vial to provide the required patient radiation dose. Place a 5 milliliter lure lock syringe into the provided acrylic syringe shield. Screw the lid on to secure the syringe. Attach a lubricated 21 gauge needle, at least 50 millimeters in length, to the syringe. Leave the needle cap attached to the needle. Partially remove the center of aluminum crimp seal from the SurSphere's microsphere shipping vial with alcohol disinfected forceps to expose septum. Do not fully remove crimp and swab seal. Swab septum with an alcohol wipe held in forceps. Dispose of the alcohol swab in the appropriate radioactive materials waste container. Insert a 25 gauge needle through the septum of the shipping vial to create a vent ensuring that the needle is well clear of the contents of the shipping vial. Again, it is recommended that either a purpose-designed venting needle or a separate filter attached to the short 25-gauge needle is used in order to prevent fluid leakage. Using the shielded syringe and lubricated 21-gauge needle, puncture the septum of the SurSphere's microsphere shipping vial vertically. Quickly draw back and forth at least six times in order to resuspend the microspheres thoroughly. This step is essential to get a full suspension. Quickly draw up the volume of microspheres containing the calculated dose into the shielded 5 milliliter syringe. Stabilize the glass shipping vial by using a remote handling device such as forceps. Carefully remove the 21 gauge needle from the shipping vial. Before drawing back the needle completely, a slight pullback on the plunger to remove slurry from the needle will reduce the chance of a drop of fluid dripping during transfer. Recap the needle using forceps and set the dose aside. Shake the shipping vial to redispense the microspheres and measure the activity remaining in the shipping vial with the dose calibrator. Subtract the activity remaining in the shipping vial from the starting total activity in the shipping vial in order to determine the amount of activity that has been drawn up into the 5 milliliter syringe. If the amount of activity drawn up into the 5 milliliter syringe is not correct, then transfer the microspheres back into the shipping vial and redraw the necessary volume. When the correct activity is drawn, return the shipping vial to the lead pot. Remove the vent needle from the shipping vial with forceps and place into an appropriate radioactive waste container. Replace the lid of the lead delivery pot. If the total volume in the shielded 5 milliliter syringe is less than 3 milliliters, draw up enough sterile water for injection to make up to a total volume between 3 and 5 milliliters before transferring the microspheres into the V vial.
Once the correct activity has been withdrawn and the volume is above 3 milliliters, transfer the microspheres into the vented V-vial in the acrylic V-vial holder. Puncture the septum opposite of the venting needle. Ensure that the distance between any puncture holes in the V-vial septum are at least 2 millimeters apart and maintain an awareness of the needle bevel point to avoid scraping the vial sides. Inject the suspension carefully and make sure the syringe is completely empty. Note, this step should be done once only. When removing the 21 gauge needle from the V-vial, a slight pullback on the plunger to remove slurry from the needle will reduce the chance of a drop of fluid dripping during transfer. Remove the vent needle from the V-vial. Swab septum with an alcohol wipe held in forceps. Ensure that the screw-on lid of the V-vial holder is secure and sit the plug into place. Do not force it. Unscrew the syringe holder and remove the syringe and needle. Dispose of both the syringe and the needle into an appropriate radioactive waste container. The patient-specific activity of SirSphere's microspheres is now ready for the transport to the angiography suite in which the implantation will be performed.